And if anybody knows the Lord, it's me, because I, I died twice on the operating table and some things that I'm aware of that I will never share with anyone. I'll never share, I, I won't share it with anyone. You know, it's very, very odd because in talking with people, and they always ask, like, I don't know how you do it. And it's like, because of y'all. I mean, that's like really simple answer because if I had to do it by myself, I probably would have been wayward and walked away from everything and been dead by now. You know that I, I think you're great regardless, so. But I fight because it's expected of me because of who I am. And if I want to stay true to who I am, then that means you got to get back up and fight. You know, put in the effort. You know, like, you know, John Wooden says, you know, your best is required. Dot, 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 all the time. No matter what he took away from you, he's allowing you to tell your story. Something you and I talked about way before Ballside Middle. Yes, Eric, we did. You have to tell this story. Joy and pain are like sunshine. And rain, rain, give it to rock. Joy was following the rules and then playing and being successful because I did what I was told. And commanding that ability to um, focus on that, that's where the joy was. It wasn't in the winning, because the winning takes care of itself. But just playing the game properly and doing the things that are necessary, it's just a happy, it's a happy sport. Well, the main thing that got me really involved in the game uh, God's Honest Truth was Les Miller, uh, my best friend, at around fourth grade, fifth grade. And uh, he asked me if I wanted to go and play because we used to be together all the time and listening to Nick games together and keeping the scorebook as the game was going on. And um, that was my first experience. As a kid and you're in Brooklyn and you're you know, experiencing things, at least for me, I lived in a multicultural community. And, um, and, you know, five blocks in each direction, that could change. You know, playing you know, street football in Brooklyn. You know, dad sometimes came running down. Even moms came out double dutching. People still got along pretty well in the immediate community that I grew up in because it was just an automatic. So I decided to sign with LIU. And I said, you know what, I'm home. It's a very comfortable environment. The whole community were there to support me. One of my teammates, Rudy Johnson, who really pushed us over that line of mediocrity to say, look, we're better than this. And uh, it gave us the opportunity to participate in the NCAA tournament. And I had an extremely great game. But as a team, you know, we faltered, but we represented. And it was the first time we ever went to the NCAA tournament. And that in itself spoke volumes because of the history of the school. Us bringing that back really was a combination of uh, the efforts of our teammates. You know, the rest is really history. Well, um, Marfan syndrome is um, a condition that impacts your connective tissue. And um, specifically, um, your aorta. And uh, what happens is that it can swell and, be, and become enlarged and then eventually I use terms that I, my wife doesn't like. I say bursts open, but it dissects is the medical term. And that's when you start bleeding to death, um, plain and simple. I was at a wedding in uh, July of um, 2016 and life of the party, you know, getting everybody all excited. One of my nieces got married, my daughter's in the wedding. And for some reason, the next day, every time I laid down, I couldn't breathe. Finally called the hospital. Turns out that I had a heart attack. And the reason being is because of my aorta was getting ready to rupture. My doctor said to me specifically, he says, Eric, he said, you're one of the most admirable patients I've ever had. You know, you do everything I tell you to do. You did nothing wrong, but the disease is rearing this ugly head, but we're gonna fix this problem. We're gonna go and we're gonna remove that part of the aorta and put a mechanical one in. So I went in on August 24th, I think maybe about, about 11, 12 days later, I wake up and it turns out that I coded out twice. Uh, my body was so swollen, it couldn't close my chest. So they induced a coma. 
And it turns out my surgery was, I believe, 26 and a half hours long. And um, when I woke up, I was on a ventilator and they pulled it out, which is painful as hell. I look up and my hands and my feet were bandaged. And so I'm like, what the heck's going on? And it turns out that my hand was black and dried up like a mummified hand. I freaked out. And they said, we're gonna probably have to amputate. They amputated my hand, half of both of my feet and my fingers. And um, honestly, I, I, I try my best not to think about it um, because I'm still here. I'm, I'm treating it like it's a game. I'm down by 10, game ain't over. Honestly, I mean, and, and that, believe it or not, that the game of basketball is saving my mental life. Never mind the physical part of it. Mentally, the game of basketball is keeping me from losing it totally. But through it all, I can't do it alone, so I do it with people around me. I do it with the support mechanism in place. My wife and my daughter, you know, all of my friends. I mean, it's, I respect everybody so much because of the uh, controls that they put in place to support me that I will never, ever be able to repay everybody. And it's not on a monetary level, it's on a spiritual or emotional level to understand that someone's support can propel you towards still walking or living that life. But at the same time, I don't know when the floor is gonna fall from up underneath me. And none of us really understand it, other than the fact that you're here and you do what you have to do. But until it's all done, life is constantly throwing so many curveballs at you. But you fight. And, you, and I don't have a choice in the matter. Um, because number one, my wife and daughter wouldn't let me. None of y'all would let me. And so the fight continues. But at the same time, I want you to understand in order for you to enjoy this life, that you gotta take a stand with things. You have to have some kind of foundation in your thinking to be a teammate, you know, to be a teammate, a group of, an individual in that group that's working on a common goal, and that's to live and flourish and to do things, you know, and to be there for somebody else as well, because it's not about you, it's about us.